better strap yourself in. It's time for the Howie Car Show. With the uh, collapse of local mainstream media news outlets, the uh, bloggers have, have moved in and uh, they're reporting the news that doesn't get reported anymore by newspapers or TV stations. And uh, Turtle Boy is one of the people that does this uh, with uh, TV Daily News. Down on the Cape, uh, Robert Bastille runs uh, HyannisNews.com. HyannisNews.com. He keeps the uh, the police scanner on, uh, just like uh, Stanley Foreman used to do in Boston when he worked at the Herald American and later for Channel 5. And uh, maybe he still does. And uh, uh, Robert Bastille does a great job reporting the news on Cape Cod, the police news especially. And uh, there's been a lot of police news lately. Uh, as the days get longer and uh, the, we we get closer to the summer, it's uh, the, the crime is picking up, especially in Hyannis. Hyannis has become uh, sort of a no man's land with all the uh, all the migrants and the illegal aliens in there. And there was a uh, there was a, a bad fight at a bar at a nice bar on uh, Main Street on uh, on on Sunday morning. And I wanted to have uh, Robert Bastille on to talk about that. He's got some uh, some great pictures as he always does. Robert Bastille, thanks for being with us here on the Howie Car Show. Hey, how you doing, Howie? Good. Tell us what happened at the embargo. A nice bar. They, uh, you know, they have they have Very bouncers. Nice they have a. Uh, they try to get the courthouse crowd in. You know, they they encourage you to dress nicely. What what happened uh, late Saturday night, early Sunday morning? Yeah. So uh, you know, it had been a busy night, and then it, there was a lull, and I was hoping to like you know just chill out for a minute or two and then i heard the call come in that there was a um the that the that the bouncers were you know in some type of disturbance with with some customers there and there was a there was a glass broken over somebody's head and um you know it, it caught my attention because you know bar fights usually don't draw me um but this caught my attention because it's you know this is our local tapa joint it's a it's a nice place you know and I know the owners, and they're very nice people. And it's not—it's not—it's a very rare occurrence. I went down there. It's not a bucket of blood, I, is what you're saying. Not at all. No, not at all. And um, as soon as I got down there, um, you know, there was two scenes rapidly developed. There was a group of men that left in a um, Toyota Highlander, um, and then there was a scene at the bar. So. I had to get both scenes, and I did. You can see it on highnessnews.com. There's a video of the arrest and and the scene at the bar. Um, the uh, the officer that responded inside the bar, he saw the broken glass, and then he um, he went and found one of the bouncers in the bathroom cleaning the blood off the side of his head. Um, he was um, allegedly struck in the head it, with a glass. It wasn't your ordinary glass. This was a heavy duty Libby Durrett. Dura tough. It's a special bar quality glass that's thick, if you can picture that, like a rock yeah. glass that was smashed and it's designed not to break, but it broke. And the um according to the I spoke with the owner, the the um the bouncer had managed to turn his head at the last second to avoid getting his face ripped off. Um, oh. so he took it ac took it across the skull. Apparently these um these individuals have they're they were in town, they're up from Florida. Um, do, on a plumbing job, so they traveled all the way from Florida to here for a plumbing job, according to them, to what they said to the um, the, the staff at the bar. What, what is their and nationality, was, Robert? Well, I, I pulled the, the the reports, and um, I know the person that was arrested was um, he used as a, a Colombian passport. Um, the, the driver of the vehicle, there was four of them. Um, driver of the vehicle was the only one with a U.S. identification. He had a New York City, a New, a New York State of New York driver's license, and the uh, right front passenger had a Mexican ID card. The uh, rear left passenger had a Colombian identification card, and then the uh, the right the right rear passenger, who was the one that had he had cuts on his hand from the the, the, the you know allegedly from the the glass, the glass. breaking across that, that that guy's skull, you know, and uh, he had a Colombian passport, 
which is interesting um, because I happened to be within earshot as as the bail commissioner was bailing him out on the charges of assault and battery with a dangerous weapon, and all he had to do was sign his name and he was free to go, you know. But he didn't want to give up his Colombian passport for some reason. He made up this, you know, he. Um, and he he said something. He think. he's he doesn't speak English, but he's apparently uh, mastered uh, some of his uh, cons- his alleged constitutional rights. What did he say? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So so I speak Spanish. So he he did say to the translator, he's like, you know, you know, tengo tengo mis derechos. And um, what does that mean? Rights. Uh, you know, I have my he rights. has his rights. And, um, he doesn't have a driver's okay. license or any identification <laughs> that he wants to share, but he has his rights. Okay. So the poor bail, bail commissioner is sitting there, and, you know, he, he comes in from home, you know, and he's being patient with this guy. It's like, look at dude, you, you, you're either going to sign, because you, you have to give us your passport to make sure you show up to court. Um it, or, or you can go back in the cell for two days until Monday to get arraigned. And um, they went back and forth, and this guy just decided to, to you know, do the time in the cell. Um, and then rather I went, than give and, up the passport, know, makes one suspect that perhaps there was a problem with the passport. I thought, I thought uh, uh, Robert Bastille that that you know, when a police report, you had to put your nationality down. Right. Well, that was my experience. I used to I used to work for a couple of police departments on the Cape, and I thought that they asked that, but they do ask. All right. So I asked. I got the paperwork here, and I think I might have sent it to you guys. I don't know if you got it, but I was checking. It says, but it does not ask the citizenship or the nationality of the uh, suspect. In this case, you think you'd need that information for flight risk, but um, so it doesn't ask that. But it does ask. However, it asks about the gender gender identity and the uh, preferred pronouns. So if you look at the report I sent you, he's a, he identifies as a male, and it's got he, him, his. He identifies so as he a did. male, and we know what pronouns to use, but we don't know what nationality yeah. he is. We d- it doesn't spell it out. It doesn't make it easier for us because I'm very concerned about the billions of dollars that are being spent on the migrants. You know, I'm trying to get, you know, be by the way, new, new it, news but, today out of the state house. They're running out of money again. This ha- it's a standing headline. Every two weeks they run out of money for the illegal aliens. What's it? What's it up to now? Well, you know, uh, Rodericks, the uh, Senate chairman of Ways and Means, he seems to know more than the administration. He said that it's nine hundred and thirty two uh, million dollars so far. And they've we'll they've we'll they've appropriated five hundred and seventy five million, and that's that's going to run out by in about a week. So they're going to have to come mm-hmm. up with more money. But the 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 cost the the projected cost for the year is nine hundred and thirty two million. And I'm going to say again, the if the over under is a billion, I'm taking the over. I think it's a lot right. more than nine hundred and thirty two million. Me too. It just seems um, out of control what's going on right now. So, so is this guy? So, were the other guys arrested? Were they, I mean, they 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 threw him out of the bar, out of, out of embargo, out, and then the, so instead the of just like of bar. instead of just like it's going just a, home or buying a six pack for the well, it was too late to buy a six pack. Instead of going home, right. they just they came in the side door and tried to sneak back into the bar. Right? This is so like the, as the story goes, they were getting loud and obnoxious, and they were they. They wanted them to leave, so they, they they guided them out the side door because they didn't want any trouble, you know. So they got them out the side door, and then apparently, according to the video and the reports that I've been reading, they, they then abruptly scurried around front like, a, you know, feral bar patrons, and they burst into the front door. And then it, then um, the officer, according to his report, he saw, you know, the swinging and the fighting, and then he saw it. That's when he saw this... Um, this hand fly down on that guy's skull with something in his hand. Have you, can we get the video? Shattered. Can you get the video? I'm going to try. As a matter of fact, you know, I, I there's, yeah. I mean, I think I think you might also be interested in talking to the to the bar owner. Yeah, I'd this, like to talk to him because he runs a really. I'll give the number if, off air if you want. Um, yeah, we'll call him. A, to, we'll really call him nice tomorrow. They will, okay. All right. Yeah. He so, now. Yeah, so, yeah, go ahead. Is this going on? Is this going on a lot in Hyannis? Is this getting worse in Hyannis as the weather gets warmer? It's it's always going on like this, honestly. But um, I'm very concerned about the 
the uh, you know you saw the article I just wrote before that earlier in the night was somebody involved in a serious crash right and they flee the scene and they don't the, the driver's on license and they don't speak English right and um, yeah. he's sitting there posing for a photo giving me a peace sign and I'm like don't you realize that back at the scene you left a car disabled in the middle of the mall intersection three occupants one of them a child and it's like they they didn't have the least bit concern and that really troubles me because it's uh i don't know it just seems really it, number one it seems unfair but it's just dangerous behavior i wrote, wrote just a, you know tongue in cheek um little piece uh, yesterday about an accident where people actually remained on scene and i was yeah. kind of being sarcastic but <laughs> it seems that mo people take off from accidents on a daily basis here at least yeah, especially once a day. late late at night and and you also said inside his cruiser this was at the accident where the uh, they no one spoke english uh, the earlier one right. before the bar fight an right. officer used a special cell phone to connect the, the driver with a Portuguese English translator. And I've read other of your stories where they have a uh, they have a phone, a, tra a special cell phone for English Spanish translators. I mean, do, do all the cops on Cape Cod now have to carry one of these special phones because nobody speaks English anymore? You know, it's um, it's a special phone that they pass around during the shift. Normally, Barnstable Police um, has like Spanish a Spanish speaking or a, uh, you know Portuguese speaking officer on duty, but they get busy, and so when they when the um, translators, the, the patrol officers that can translate are unavailable. They use these phones and they're passing them around. I don't know the reason why it has to be a special phone. I'm guessing it's it's because you know records. Evidence. They have to keep the records. Of, yeah. Right. Um, you know, I've been, I've been asked that. You know, I speak Spanish. I I just don't want to get involved and get involved in their case. I'm just there to observe. But I mean, it's it's not unusual for there to be a language barrier. I would say it happens very very often every night. Um, and that's not a that's not a concern of mine. The language barrier. It's the the legality of these people. So this guy that the, that that smashed the uh, the Duro tough glass over the. They, I called the Barnesville court, and the, their records um, do not reflect anything about him being here legally or not. I found that concerning because they, they uh, released him on, his, on personal recognizance with a promise to appear on May 13th. So he, he gave his word. Good luck. That he was gonna re yeah. <laughs> and, but he is ordered how he, he can't go back to the embargo. He's ordered to stay away, and he has to stay 50 feet away from the victim. So... Um, you know, it, I'm seeing these things where there's um, there's a different set of consequences for different people, and it, that's what really yeah, concerns. Yeah, we've all noticed. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, I know that's the yeah. problem. That's the it it's, it's it, a huge it's a huge problem. Yeah. You know? So where, where can people go if they want to read up on these stories, uh, Robert Bastille? So yeah, so I'm glad you asked. Um, the uh, it's hyannisnews.com. And um, I'm out there usually every night. I've, I, you know, I was a little under the weather the last few months, but I'm out there usually every night. And if I go out, I usually find some type of story with violence or an, you know, something, you know, some and special cell phones to they... handle the translations. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Lord! So is uh, give a, give uh, Emma the number for uh, for for the uh, guy who runs the embargo and, uh, and try to get if you can get that uh, video. We'd love to get some of that video too, or we'll tell at least tell people where to see the video of the yeah. of uh, the bar fight. Yeah. That that's just I mean this is bad. This is just bad that is this bad. is going on. Yep. Well done, All right. You have a nice night. We really appreciate you being with us. You're doing a great job, uh, Robert Bastille, with the HyannisNews.com. Uh, there's uh, quite a uh, qu quite a news desert, or was, uh, with the Cape Cod Times basically uh, ceasing to cover local news. But you're you're trying to fill it as best you can. The HyannisNews.com. Check it out. It's a great uh, great website, especially for crime news. I'm Howie Carr. He's Howie Carr, and he's back. Check out HyannisNews.com. He does a he does a great job, Robert Bastille, and he it's it's not an easy job staying on the scanner and taking a lot of crap. And sometimes he just has to wait outside for for a while while he, he doesn't know what's happening inside. And then they come out and people are yelling and screaming at him, and it's just uh, it's just. But he 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 likes he likes doing it. He's it's his uh, it's his 
vocation and his avocation. And we'll stay in touch with him.